Hi, I think I found one of the presidents in the Bible. Now, I'm not sure who it is. It could be one in the future. I really don't know. Revelation 17:12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Now, if you look at the, uh, the word kingdom in Strong's Concordance, it means kingship, sovereignty, authority, rule, especially of God, both in the world and in the hearts of man. Hence, kingdom in the concrete sense. Now, let's look at the word king. It basically means a ruler. But in some passages, it may be translated as emperor. Now ask yourself, who rules the United States? Think about it. Most people don't know. I'm sure, I don't think I know. One author wrote, who rules the United States? And he answers his question. The simple and terrible answer is, he says, we do not know. That's because in America, we have a bunch of checks and balances in our government. But it is the president that I must say, he can sign executive orders and approve bills passed in Congress. In this sense, you could say our president is a king, or at least a weak ruler within a kingdom called the United States. The kings mentioned in Revelation 12 have no kingdoms. How can you be a king without a kingdom? That's a good point, but I must refer to Acts 6.12. Acts 6.12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. What is a great earthquake? Now, I felt tremors when I lived in California, but no great earthquake how bad will this earthquake be? And Revelation 12:13 says, Every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Wow, America has so many mountains that I don't think anyone has really numbered them all. People can tell you that there are seven highest mountains, but what about the low ones, like the Appalachian Mountains that run for 1,500 miles along the east coast of the United States from northern Alabama to Maine? Now, Alaska would be a place of many mountains and a place I would not live when you think about Revelation 12:13. The Bible said they will all be moved out of their places. Now think about it. What chaos, what calamity, what terror it will be when the mountains begin to move. Not only that, but think about the islands. They're moving too. Beautiful Hawaii, the place called Paradise of the Pacific, the islands of Aloha. Now I'm just talking about America. Let's just concentrate on America. Now, the death toll alone in America will be horrendous to contemplate, and I doubt if our kingdom of the United States will survive. We're already running in deficits in the trillions of dollars, and frankly, there will be no money to rebuild. Now, Israel, on the other hand, has a sound economy. It really helps when they're getting money from the U.S. in the billions. Israel is even in the business of lending money to other nations. The Financial Times says that bombs drop, yet Israel's economy grows. Jerusalem is almost like the United States. They have different races and religions that live there, but they all share the same values as we do as a nation. Our nation is especially good friends with Israel and Jerusalem. Jerusalem is now their capital due to the president of our United States. Now, Israel's law recognizes five religions that makes them very tolerant, at least before the earthquake happens. Now, I believe Jerusalem will rule the world when the Antichrist comes. Revelation 13, 16 speaks of the Antichrist, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. After the quake, 
Israel will rebuild faster than any other country on earth. They will have money to do so, and other nations will flock to their side, hoping for a handout. It's interesting to note that two countries have already relocated their embassies to Jerusalem. America is one of them. America, I believe, will bend to the Antichrist, not out of hatred for God, but out of a need for survival. The Antichrist, little hands, will have the world by their throats after the earthquake. His message will be, submit or die. Many in the United States will bend their knees to the Antichrist out of need for survival. They will be doing so for the love of their little children. In doing so, they will accomplish temporary safety. But I believe by submitting to the beast, the Antichrist, it will hazard their soul. Look at Revelation 14, verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. I think the best thing you can do now is to be saved. The Philippian jailer said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? In Acts 16, verse 31, They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Salvation is simply believing on Christ. Believe that he is the Son of God. Believe he died for your sins. Believe he rose from the dead. Believe the Bible are facts and not myths. Now commit and call on Jesus to save you. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on Jesus. Jesus, save me. Wash me in your blood. Take me to heaven when I'm raptured or when I die. Resurrect me. Give me new life. In Jesus' name, thank you. Oh, bless your holy name. Amen. This is Larry Zorro. Take care. God bless.